If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement, male advantage ebook, or my personal workout and diet plan, all links are in the bio. Okay guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how Bill Gates isn't a high value man, okay? And it's not specifically me picking out Bill Gates, it's going to be a part of the video, but this was more inspired by, you remember when I got my first SMP done, my hair thing done, you guys heard that I was listening to Andrew Tate. But on that Fresh and Fit podcast, he said something along the lines of, somebody mentioned Bill Gates, and he was like, well, Bill Gates isn't a high value man. And it re-triggered something in my head about my straight seven system, which there's a lot of people who have joined this channel since I first talked about the straight seven system. It's in my Mail Advantage book, which is now a paperback if you want to get it. I'm signing the first 200 copies. Only got like 20 of them left. So if you want to get one, the link's below. It's a paperback. It's about $12.99. The delivery is uh, first class. It's tracked. I've added that in now because the deliveries were slow with COVID and all this other shit. You know, uh, we had a delivery shortage of drivers in the UK. It was a bit of a nightmare, okay? Um, but it's first class and track now, so it'll be very, very quick. So the delivery price has gone up by about a pound roughly in each area, but it's necessary. I think you guys would rather that than it taking like two, three weeks to get the package. So it'll be quick now for everybody, which I think is very important. But the straight seven system was in that book. And I'm going to take you over to the screen in a minute, which I like doing. I've got a few diagrams that I've put together. Um, and I'm going to break down how like, I, I've often said, this is the straight seven system, it revolves around this concept. You don't have to be a 10 out of 10 in all areas. You just have to be consistently above average. So if we call, I know I said before that average was like 3.3, but I was talking about the average man on the planet right now. But if we just say five is average in that one select trait, if you would, so like your wealth, where is it on a 10 scale? Like things like wealth and whatever, they can be measured you know, measurable things. That's what we've got here. So wealth out of 10, let's say five is average. Six is above average. Seven is well above average. Okay. And that's where you want to be minimum. Like as long as you're seven and above in a multitude of areas, I always say three or more um, is the kind of like golden zone. And it depends what those three are because you do have a trump card of like body and wealth, or like looks and wealth, like if you can blend those two together, it's almost like a trump card, you don't need three, those two can like kick you along, but you usually need like three, okay, so it might be like personality is like a seven, Uh, assets are a seven, and wealth is like a seven, like that can really like push you on, like you can, you can have a really good life, you become what I define as an outlier male once you have at least three or above, and you're like more well-rounded, now, somebody like Bill Gates, and like I said, I'll break it down in a minute, he's super wealthy, he's not in good shape, he's old, his assets aren't actually that great, I'll break that down in a minute, you know, he obviously has stuff like he, he owns Microsoft, but his, his assets themselves aren't that great in terms of life setup, which I've spoken about before, his personality, kind of creepy, I think at least 50% of the planet think he's a paedophile, um, you know, and in terms of looks, what, like a 1 or a 2 out of 10, like, it's not great, is it? So across the board, it's like he's just a guy with money. He's just a rich guy. And this is why it's so important, as I've said before, the Gary V and Dan Pena video, yeah, you can make a lot of money, but it's probably more important to make a little bit less money and spend a bit more time in the gym or on your appearance or making sure that you sleep 8 hours a night because your life gets better. The whole aim of life is to have the best possible life. Now, in order to do that, I don't think you make as much money as possible. I think you make a very good amount of money that can then give you access to that life. You know, I think most people would rather be Chris Hemsworth than Jeff Bezos, right? I think most guys would rather have that life. I think most guys would rather be a 16-year-old guy who is going to end up earning like a million a year when they're older than Jeff Bezos now. Like that's a fair thing, right? Even though they'd have to go through all the shit again of like spots, rejection, the struggles of making it, etc. 
Like, as long as they knew that guy was going to make it by, like, 28 and he was going to earn a million a year, real handsome guy, in shape, whatever. Most guys would take that scenario over being, like, the richest guy in the world. But you kind of look like shit and it's just, like, life's not that good, right? So, you know, you've got cool shit going on, but it's just not the same as somebody who's more well-rounded. And that's what the straight seven system kind of looks into. And we'll break it down now. We'll move over to the screen, okay, guys? Okay, guys, so here we are now with this elementary school kind of diagram that I've put together, but it still works. We're going to use it, okay? Now, this is just to describe the straight seven system quickly, just to give you an example of like something that you could use it for. So here we've got body, wealth, assets, looks, personality, and wealth and assets are different, okay? Because wealth on its own means nothing. The assets is like kind of life setup. That's what that should be, like... I guess you could you could put life set up here. I've just used five as a random as a random thing. But we're going to look at it here. So this person has got seven body. They've got six in wealth, they've got a two in assets. They've got a six in looks and a 10 in personality, okay? So I think a lot of young guys kind of see themselves at this kind of level where Maybe not young, but somebody who's like mid-20s, early 30s, where everyone thinks they've got a great personality and they might do. You know, I'm really funny. More people should get to know me. Like, they think they're on top in this area. Body's like a seven, which is well above average because they just hit the gym and most people look like shit. Wealth is a six. It's just like maybe maybe just slightly above average, not well above average, but slightly because they've got a little hint of ambition. Assets are only a two because they haven't really, you know, had enough time in life yet to build that up. This isn't high enough to compensate for this yet. And looks a six, just slightly above average. It's just like a normal guy, okay? Now in this scenario, if you had a 10 personality, a seven body, but your wealth was a six and assets were a two, I think looks at a six is okay. Because I think if you can get this body up to like an eight and get your body fat percentage down to like a te- uh, uh, down to like ten percent body fat, well, this will go up to a seven naturally. So then you're well above average in personality, body, and looks. Okay, it's a great scenario, but the majority of your time looking at this needs to go to these two areas. That's where I'd be dedicating the majority of my time to increasing my wealth, which would then increase my assets and life setup. Which, if you could get them to a 7 across the board, and then your looks could come up if you get to 10% body fat, well, then you're basically a straight 7 across the board with a 10 personality. Then that would be a great scenario, okay? So that's just a quick example of, like, how you look for your weak points and how you bring them up. It revolves around the aggregation of marginal gains, okay? It's a topic I spoke about before. How Team Sky and Cycling they looked at their kind of strategy for the next season and they were like, it's very hard to, you know, we're at a point now where technology is so good and our sports science is so good, it's going to be difficult to improve one single area by like 50%, 100%, even 5%. So they were like, can we improve 200 areas by like 1% and then get a massive overall improvement via the aggregation of marginal gains? This is how I look at the straight seven system. Let's say you have like 300 categories, so like personality, looks, assets, wealth, body, life setup. Like there's just like 200 different things like dress sense, hygiene, whatever. It just goes on forever, okay? You've got all these things. Your aim is to put as many as you can at a seven because a seven is wildly accomplishable for any man on planet Earth, okay? Like I said, average is just your average bum on the street. You should. That's basically going to be your starting point for most guys. Six with a tiny little bit of work will put you put you above average. Seven is well above average. It's not that hard to do, okay, guys? Like, the eight, nine, and ten bracket is very difficult. But seven across the board. And now, if you were just a seven in personality and body, like, yeah, you're not going to stand out too much. You're going to be above average than the average guy because they just basically do nothing for themselves. But like I said, try and get as many as you can to a seven across the board. And as many of these as you bring up via the the aggregation of marginal gains, the more well-rounded you become as a man, and that's when you become an outlier male, because you stand out from the crowd because you have, like I said, a well-rounded life. You're not weak in any areas. You don't have any red flags, if you would. Like, you've got these red flags here. Oh, he doesn't earn enough. Yeah, but his house is shit, his car is shit. And I'm not talking just about women as well, like in a business sense or whatever, like some of these things can let you down. 
that you can't move forward quick enough, whatever. But let's say if we are just doing it on sexual market value, some of these things are slightly letting you down. They're red flags. They're reasons for somebody to say no. Get everything up to a seven so it's well above average. And if it's well above average across the boards, turns you into one, you know, hell of a catch. Like an absolute animal of a man. And it's the straight seven system, okay? So let's look at some examples now. So we've got Bill Gates. Okay, it's quite an interesting one. I think most people would agree Bill Gates' body is a one. Now, he's not he's not obese or whatever, but because he's old and he's not really in shape and he's kind of skinny fat, you know, he doesn't really help himself with the clothes he wears, he's a one. Okay, I think most people would say, like, they wouldn't want that body. You could justify a two for his age, maybe a three, but like, I'm just going to say a one because it kind of displays the extremities that we've got here of like 10 and 1 between body and wealth. So wealth, obviously a 10. At one point, he's the richest man in the world. Like he's a 10. He's in that top bracket, okay? There's no dispute in that whatsoever. So wealth, a 10. Assets, I put a 6. Now, the reason I put it at a 6 is because obviously they're above average. But I don't think they're anything to write home about. Like the guy has obviously like really expensive stuff but I don't think it really benefits his life like the private jet if he has one yeah that benefits his life that might bump him up to a seven immediately you know his house like eh, it's probably not that cool you know maybe it is I don't know but I'm just using this as an example I haven't looked too much into Bill Gates I'm just using this to like kind of highlight how wealth isn't just like a singularity that bumps you up on a high value mail scale but then you look at like what car does he drive probably like a Prius or something like most of these old guys do uh, is he going on cool trips to a nice holiday home maybe like he's probably like some old ass house with like 90 bedrooms but it's just not fun do you know what I mean like I've often said to you guys I would rather live in like a two bedroom penthouse this like really really fun like it's entertainment based I can do cool shit in it it's very spacious like high roofs like it's modern everything looks cool it's got nice views of the city it's got a massive like terrace rooftop like that sort of shit's cool then live in like a a 60 bedroom manor house in the country that's cold and like nothing's around it's just surrounded by woodlands like that's the kind of vibes that I get from Bill Gates I might be wrong his assets might, you know, bump up a little bit because he is so rich. But it's stuff like farmland. Like, he owns farmland. Like, yeah, he owns Microsoft, that's cool, but they're all wealth-based assets. Like, there's no Bill Gates showed up in a brand-new blacked-out McLaren looking like Batman wearing a brand-new slim-fit suit and he looked like a boss. Like, there's none of that shit. It's just like, oh, I got money, but I'm a weirdo. That's kind of the vibe that I get from him. You know, like like I said earlier, like at least 50% of people believe he's a paedophile. Like at, at any moment, you wouldn't be shocked if like he was hanging, like when he was hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, like, that's some weird shit, right? Like, it's like, it's ju- he's, just a, he's just a wealthy guy. That's why you can't just pin him at the top and be like, he's the richest, he's going to steal your girl. It's like, that's not the case. Like he's a strange guy. Like wealth at some point, it just caps. It's like you can earn more, but your life doesn't get that much better. Like you can have all the cool shit at a seven. Like you can have a great life at a seven. You can pretty much sleep with any woman you want at a seven. Do you see what I mean, guys? It's like once you get to a certain point, you're only adding more wealth to have like business assets or like a private jet or a yacht, which is cool on top of that, but it's not necessary for like a great life. Now look, so I'm going to put Gates at a one. Again, it's like kind of a creepy guy. Always wearing those church sweaters. Like, he's a creepy guy, man. Personality. I mean, he's intelligent, but again, proper creepy guy. Like, anybody who's hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, personality's got to be a two. He's, he doesn't, like, strike you as the most confident. He's got that awkward Mark Zuckerberg body language. Like, he's just, just a creep. So, in terms of, like, the straight seven system, a guy who is seven in body, seven in wealth, seven in assets, seven in look, seven in personality shits on Bill Gates even though he's a billionaire and at one point was the richest man in the world and this is why it's so important to be well rounded because it's just like wealth on its own isn't good enough there's plenty of guys with a 10 body who are like personal trainers but their wealth is like a 2 their assets is like a 1 their looks is like a 5 or a 6 because they've not really done anything with their face it's just the body personality is like a 2 because they're just focused on the body and you're like, yeah, you're in great shape, but you just not, you're not well-rounded. Like, work on all areas, okay? 
Now, this one's quite interesting. I've gone, this is DiCaprio versus Jeff Bezos. I think you guys have probably all seen the video of Jeff, Be- Jeff Bezos' new missus. I don't know what she is, but she's fl- uh, by what she is, I mean girlfriend, wife, engaged, what, I don't know what it is, fiance, but she's flirting with DiCaprio. It's, it's really obvious. Like every, anybody who's ever seen flirting knows that that's flirting. Like she's staring into his blue eyes, which is why I've used blue for DiCaprio and I've used this like brown. Amazon box packaging color for Bezos. It's quite boring, but you get the idea, right, guys? And I'm going to compare the two, okay? So that because I saw a comment when I, on a Jeff Bezos on that video where she was flirting, somebody said, "See, money doesn't matter, guys." And it's like, no, like DiCaprio is still worth like 400 million, okay? And it's but it's once you get past a certain point, having more of something doesn't really matter. It's like being a guy who's 8 out of 10 in looks, no woman's going to be like, yeah, but I want that guy who's 10 out of 10. It's like, 8 is just good enough. Like, what more are you looking for? A guy who's like an 8 out of 10 in body, most women aren't going to be like, yeah, but that guy's a 10. It's like, this is good enough. Same with wealth. Say, like, assets are different because it's life set up. Like, it, life gets cooler. It actually improves your life quite a lot. Personality would matter as well, I guess. But beyond a certain point for most of these, it's like, this is good enough, okay? And that's why the, se- the straight 7 system is so effective. And I'm going to explain to you now why DiCaprio outranks Bezos, even though Bezos is wealthier. And this is why, it illustrates my point, you need to work on more areas than just, I'm a billionaire, I work 18 hours a day, I'm stressed out, I'm going to have a heart attack at 60. It's like, it doesn't give you a good life. Like, you can have a much better life having less money. Like, instead of being a billionaire, Bezos, do what DiCaprio's done and have a couple hundred million and then focus on, like, other stuff when you were younger, like getting in shape, like working on your looks and stuff like that, like having the coolest possible assets, like life sets up and those sort of things. It, it, for you guys listening, I get that he wants to go to space, he wants to accomplish all of that, I understand that. But for you guys listening to this, there's more to life than just being the richest guy in the room. Like life gets a lot better when you go across the board with the straight seven system, okay? So body, I've given them both a five. The reason being, DiCaprio's in pretty terrible shape, but he's a lot younger than Bezos. And Bezos is in pretty good shape. I know it's steroids, but he's in pretty good shape, but he's a lot older. So he still has that like saggy old skin. Still has those like old what do they call them? Like those old brown spots on your head and stuff like that. He still has all of that shit. Probably has some like real wrinkly, saggy old balls. Right? That's just what you get when you get older. DiCaprio's got none of that. So in terms of like body, they're about equal. Okay. They got like a five both of them, if DiCaprio, like, decided to get in shape, I mean, this guy's gonna be, like, a 10 across the fucking board, so, like, he'd be one of the most incredible-looking guys of all time, right, he just, but do you know what it tells me when a guy doesn't get in shape, that he doesn't need to, like, I did the Dana White male advantage journey yesterday, it's like, he doesn't really care about being in shape, because he probably just gets women anyway, right, as crazy as that sounds, it's like, Dana White's ugly, he's bold, he's fat, Trust me, if a guy doesn't need to get in shape, he probably, you know, if he's not getting in shape, he probably doesn't need to. Like, life is probably good enough already where he's just like, why the fuck would I put the effort in? It's the same with DiCaprio. He just doesn't seem to care. Now we move on to wealth. Now, undeniably, Bezos has to be a 10, you know, just has to be. And we've got DiCaprio, I'd say he has to be an 8. He's not one level down. I'd say he's probably two levels down from Bezos. If Bezos is worth, like, what, over, like, 100 billion now? And DiCaprio's worth, you know, if seven's well above average, eight has to be like DiCaprio with like his couple hundred million. You know, he could even squeeze a nine. I probably maybe should have put him at a nine. It's just Bezos is so high up. But at a certain point, like how much higher do you want to go? So like an eight or a nine, okay? But let's use an eight for now. Because I think somebody who's got like one or two billion would probably have to be a nine here on this scale. Although I guess like anything billion and above would probably be like a 10, right? But in terms of assets, they've both got really cool lives. Like, space travel from Bezos, on yachts for, like, DiCaprio. Like, yeah, they got cool lives, man. Like, they're both at a 10 for assets, but their wealth is so high, you'd assume that they would. They're quite cool guys, both of them. Now, looks, you've got it. Like, DiCaprio shouldn't be a 10, because on the street, he wouldn't be, because of the shape he's in. But because he's a movie star, and he is a real handsome guy, like, he just gets away with it. He's just a 10 in looks. He just... He spends a lot of money on his looks, you know, he keeps himself well-groomed and stuff like that. He's, he's a 10 in looks. 
Bezos is like a three, just because of just because he's old. Like if Bezos was like late thirties, early forties, with the shape that he managed to get in, this would be like a seven for his body. But his looks would probably be like a five. You know, he'd be a pretty well-rounded man. But he's just he's done everything a bit late. Like he started worrying about the body transformation a bit late. I guess he was like finding his woman less attractive. He met that new woman. That's usually a good sign when a guy gets in shape. He's probably met a new woman. Okay, personality. DiCaprio, I'd say it's quite hard to say he's not a 10. Like, that guy's charismatic as fuck. Like, that's probably top of the tree in terms of personality. Bezos isn't bad, okay? He's got a bit about him. He's a decent guy. He's not like a brain dead pedophile like uh, Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. They just seem like slugs. He's like a 5 out of 10. I'd say I could have a conversation with the guy. He got a bit of a sense of humor. He seems all right, okay? So I would give him a 5. So if you were to add this up, DiCaprio out of a potential 50 has 10, 20, 30. 38, I think I'm 40, 43. So 43 out of 50. That makes him wildly, you know, valuable. Wildly valuable. And if he got in shape, I mean, he'd almost be the perfect man. Like, if we bumped this up to a nine, if he got in ridiculous shape, did some Hollywood steroids, he'd be well up there, okay? It'd be ridiculous. You know, he doesn't even need to. He could just do the Brad Pitt thing where he just kind of stays in shape, out of shape, like the lowest possible level of in shape. Not when he was in, like, Fight Club and Troy. He was Jack then, but... Like, the way he just rocks it now, where he's just kind of in shape, out of shape. Like, almost like George Clooney, those sort of guys. Like, that would be a good way for DiCaprio to do it, but he doesn't really care. So he's 43. If we look at Bezos, we've got 10, 20, 25, 30, 33. Okay, so DiCaprio is 10 points higher than Bezos. We've got 33 to 43. And as much as his wealth is a 10, you know, he can be as rich as he wants, have all the assets he wants. He still gets outranked by DiCaprio. Because, like I said, at a certain point, wealth just caps. Like, if you're bringing in a million a year, it's like, it's good enough. It's good enough, right? Anything above a million a year, it's like, how much more do you fucking need? Like, you can build a fantastic life off the back of that. You can have cool shit. You can do cool shit with that. You can take care of your body and your looks. And, you know, because of the experiences you've had, your personality is going to go up. Your life setup is going to be really cool if we wanted to add that. Your, Your clothing, if we wanted to add that here, like you're just going to have a great fucking life. So past a certain point, it just caps, so it kind of becomes a lot more meaningless than something life like a life setup or whatever, or a personality or whatnot, okay? But it's it's like, it's an essential until you get to like seven. And then anything beyond seven is like, okay, cool, it's just bonuses from here. Like it just makes shit happen quicker. It just gets you noticed more, like a little bit more. But anything past a certain point is just like, yeah, okay, it, it, it diminishes, like the effect diminishes the further you go past seven, all right, guys? Now, I've got here the high school to adult switch. It's going to be a two-part slide. I think it's quite important to explain to you guys in terms of the straight seven system. Now, this is most young men, most young men, body, seven, like well above average because they're young, most guys look like shit. So being young, body's going to be like a seven, okay? Well above average. It makes sense. Look, seven. You know, again, you're a young guy. Most guys look like shit. You're well above average, okay? It might even be, you know, we're basing this just purely off looks. That's why on my other chart that I did before where most guys on average are like a 3.3, it's because it's a culmination of all of these things. So if you were to add this up, the average that you would get probably be somewhere around 3.3, okay? But in terms of just looking at looks... A guy who's like 18 years old, who's in shape, yeah, he might be like a 7 out of 10. 6, 7 out of 10, something like that, okay? This is quite this is a this is quite a high level young guy. Like in terms of like the local level or friendship group level, he's doing really well. Seven in body, seven in looks, attractive guy, probably getting women, having a pretty good life, doesn't need wealth and assets yet, but they're like a one. I should have made them red, by the way. I fucked up there. But personality, yeah, like a four, just like average guy, not a lot of life experience, he's quite a funny guy around his mates, you know, just doesn't really understand life yet, but like a four, nothing to write home about, slightly below average, but, you know, there's most guys, and they prioritize body and looks, and then this is how it changes, okay, they get to maybe 30 years old, the body's dropped to a five, it's just an average body now, they're kind of out of shape, the looks have obviously dropped down to a five because they haven't taken care of themselves. Could even be a four, to be honest, because, like I said, they haven't taken care of themselves at all. But the wealth and assets have been the trade-off. You know, and the personality's gone up because they've been in the working world, meeting people, they've grown as an individual. Personality's up to a seven. The wealth and assets have gone up to a seven because they've traded this for these two. You know, and this is why I always say, if you can... 
if you can hold on to body and looks, if you can get in the gym, really work on these while you're whilst you're building wealth and assets, you end up getting to this scenario with a straight seven system across the board. See this guy here, if he kept himself in shape throughout this period of building up the wealth, the assets and the personality by the age of 30, he'd be a seven in body, seven in wealth, seven in assets, seven in looks, seven in personality, seven in life setups. Like you could be a 10 in clothing if you wanted to. Like there's certain areas that you could really bump up because they're easier to do. You see what I mean, guys? Like it's very easy to do, but most guys let the let the body and the looks disappear while they're focusing on the wealth and the assets. You kind of trade one for the other. But if you, and that's why it's the high school to adult life switch. Like these, these matter more, but if you can take care of these along the way, you end up becoming the perfect man on the straight seven system. Now, some of these could be eight, nine, ten, whatever, you can bump them up further. But it's like male life could be really easy if guys just, because your wealth and your assets are going to go up naturally. You're going to earn more, you're going to inherit money. Like it's just, you're going to figure life out. Do you know what I mean? Like shit's just going to happen for you. When you get to 30, your boss is just going to promote you because you're 30. He can now trust you. You've got more experience. You can apply for a job with a greater wage. You pay off your uni debts. Like little things are just going to happen. This is going to take care of itself as long as you put the work in. If you can just focus on body and looks and have that discipline to really work on yourself, by like late 20s, early 30s, you're going to have that straight seven system and the coolest fucking life. But so many guys just miss out on that by trading wealth and assets for body and looks, okay? So now I move on to where should men focus? Well, in my opinion, I personally think assets you shouldn't really give a shit about early on because that basically means you're putting money into like a car, a house, like cool holiday destinations, stuff like that. Like you're trying to build a cool life setup, which you don't need to do yet. You know, it's the early days of your journey. If you put money into these things, you're going to end up taking it out to try and build your wealth back up. So um, I wouldn't focus on assets at all. I'd keep them at a one. I'd have the shittest car or not even a car. I would have the shittest flat that I live in on a cheap rent in a safe place at least. That's like the one caveat that I would add to that or the one exception to the rule if you would. But I wouldn't worry too much about like clothes and life setup and stuff like that early on. I would just try and build my t my main two would be body and wealth. You know, looks will take care of themselves because you can do orthotropics, some mental exercises. As men get older, if they're taking care of their body, their looks improve. You know, you lose that puffy fat appearance. If you're doing things like orthotropics, it'll, it'll take care of itself over, over time. So I would just make sure that that's being maintained at like average, but your body is like a seven or above. Because at any point you could like go competition ready, go 10% body fat, that comes up to like a six or a seven. Suddenly your looks are like a seven. But like I said, this will take care of itself over time as you keep working on yourself. You get better clothes, that'll go up to a six. You get 10% body fat, that's a seven. You do orthotropics, some mental exercises. You got fucked up teeth. You finally got the money, you pay for them. You go up to an eight. Like I personally think looks are very easy to take care of as long as you just maintain it at like a good foundational level. Personality, again, that will take care of itself over time. But it's definitely something you should invest in, okay? Like your intelligence. You should really work on yourself as a man. You should always try and grow. You should always try and learn from certain situations. Like, So this is where I would put my time if I was doing this all over again. This is basically what I did, okay, young. I just focused on body, wealth, personality. I built up who I was. I built this foundation of one, two, three, straight seven system, I then have bumped up looks slightly since. And assets, I'd stay my assets are still at a one. I don't give a shit. My wealth might have even... Eh, I'm not... No, if DiCaprio was an eight, my wealth is probably like a seven, okay? So I've kept it at like a seven. It's well above average. At some point, I'll take care of the assets, okay? So I'll bump these up to a seven. That sends a signal out to everybody. I'd say I'm about a seven here now on looks. But, you know, let's, let's not get into that because that's personal. You know, it's more what you think you are. And that ends up... That goes down a slippery slope. But that's kind of been my aim, is to like focus on one, two, three first, drag that up because of that, and then drag that up because of that and the wealth, because these two can then help with the looks, okay? It, like By what I mean by wealth is like, you can sleep eight hours a night, which makes you look better. You know, you can buy certain creams, you can go and get a facial, you can go to a spa, you can buy better clothes, like this is going to bump up. You've got more time to 
focus on your looks. You can buy the chewing gum and stuff like that. The, you can go and visit an orthotropic specialist like Mike Mew and pay him for his time and say, what do I need to do? Like, there's shit that you can do to bump these looks up. You don't have to go to that extreme, but I'm just saying stuff like body and wealth, it helps because then you have more time and you have a great foundation. You drag this to 10% body fat and you go up to an eight here. Yeah, well, that's going to come up to like a seven, okay, guys? So that is where I would be investing my time. One, two, three, and let these take care of themselves afterwards. So that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it explained the straight seven system a lot better. You know, a lot of guys get confused and sometimes think, oh, Chris is telling us, the more money you make, the more women you're going to get, the better your life's going to be. It's like, no, the straight seven system is way more important. Being well-rounded in a multitude of areas is 10 times more important than being the best looking guy on the planet. It's 10 times more important than being the wealthiest guy on the planet. It's 10 times more important than having the best assets. Even though like the, the best assets and life setup is probably maybe the most important thing on that list along with along with body because I think it's just you know, maybe wealth as well but that kind of falls into the assets bracket okay, and life setup. But those kind of as a group are like probably the most important. But being well-rounded, having everything across the boards, okay? Just trying to tick as many boxes as possible. Trying to become the ultimate outlier male in as many areas as possible. It's like, it's such an effective strategy because you don't have to take everything to a 10. You just have to be solid across the board with no red flags, with no reasons for people to say no. And then suddenly you just stand out from the crowd because it's very rare that you'll find this is why I always say men peak in their thirties because or the male advantage kicks off in the thirties because most men before thirty are broke. Most men in their thirties have money, but they're out of shape. And it's like if you can just blend the two together and you can get money, you understand life setup and assets and like how to do it properly. Not go and buy a twenty bedroom manor house that's just dead and boring and cold and whatever. But you can understand it properly, set your life up well and build some proper life setup along with having like with along with like maintaining some good shape like keeping yourself in good shape along the way by the time you do get to your 30s you're the ultimate man you're the outlier male you're like the king in all areas or at least you're very high level in all areas now that culmination effect gives you more value than everybody else collectively and that's what the straight seven system is all about guys and that's what you know, first man is built on the male advantage, but it stems from the straight seven system. It's one of the most important concepts that I've ever shown to you lot. And it's something that will stick around forever. That's why it's in the book as well. It's just something that I live by. It's something that I use as like a gauge as to where I'm at. Any weaknesses, I always try and drag them up. And I do stuff stage by stage. So like one year, it's money season. Like the next year, it's getting shape season. The next year, it's sort your looks out season. Like I told you guys months ago that I was going to do all that. I said it's going to be six months or a year maybe of just like sorting my body out and sorting my looks out. Once I've ticked that box, it's going to be a solid year of just focusing on the finances and building the business. After that, it's going to be a solid year of next level wealth, really good assets, you know, media tools like with the podcast and stuff like that. You know, it's just like you have different stages of your life that you need to tick. And each time you drag one of those blocks up to like a seven, it will change your life drastically because one thing on their own isn't that great. Two things together, it has a 2x effect. Three things together, it has like a 3x effect and a ripple effect over the, all the other areas. Like I said, Leonardo DiCaprio, terrible body, shouldn't be a 10 in looks, but because of all the other things that he's got going on, he ends up being a 10 in looks. Like it has like an amplified effect on all other areas because of how well-rounded you are. It's really effective, guys, but that's a straight seven system. I'm happy to reintroduce it to you guys because it's been a while since I spoke about it in depth. And um, I, really ho I really hope it helps a lot of you in your own lives and in terms of like navigating where you need to go next, where you're strong, where you're weak. It's just so much more important to focus on where you're weak and bring that up and make yourself well-rounded than it is to be like, I have a great body, I'm just going to focus on that and nothing else. Or I'm rich, I'm just going to keep getting richer. It's like... At some point, you need to like broaden your horizons because two or three things that are very good together are better than one thing that's great on its own. If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement, male advantage ebook, or my personal workout and diet plan, all links are in the bio.